The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Welcome to Health 180 with Carrie and Fan on Rogers TV Durham. Today is May 12, 2020, International Nurses Day. In recognition of all frontline healthcare workers, Rogers Sports and Media is saying thank you. We appreciate you. We're taping another COVID-19 episode by video. My guest today is Dr. Karim Solomon from Lake Ridge Health, here to talk about treating COVID-19 patients. So let's get started. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Karen. Thanks for inviting me. And before we get started, I, I also want to wish all those hardworking nurses out there happy Nurses Day and happy Nurses Week. We couldn't do it without you. That's true. How many patients um, do you see per day who have COVID-19? So I, I work in the critical care department. So mm -hmm. we only really get to see the sickest patients uh, that come through our hospital. Mm -hmm. And in that regard, over the past few weeks, we've been ranging uh, COVID positive patients within a, um, our ICUs anywhere between uh, 12 to um, eight patients uh, a, a day that we would see. Mm -hmm. Having said that, um, there are so many people that have symptoms that could be in keeping with COVID-19. So we tend to see a lot more COVID suspected cases, um, which then we would treat as potential COVID until we know what their test results are. In the emergency departments uh, and on the medical wards, uh, there's currently about 35 to 40 COVID positive patients. So that gives you an idea of uh, how much is actually coming through our hospital doors. Mm -hmm. How do you dress while treating COVID-19 patient? And why is it important for you to have proper PPE? So proper PPE is important uh, uh, for, for a number of reasons and even beyond just COVID-19 but particularly with COVID-19 because of the uh, risk of in, uh, infection. Uh, there are two types of PPE that we wear. Um, the uh, usual care PPE, which we call contact droplet, which involves a gown, gloves, uh, surgical mask, and a face shield. And then when we're doing uh, special procedures, uh, which can be uh, potentially aerosolizing the disease, uh, which we call aerosolized generating medical procedures. Uh, there's a little bit higher risk uh, and we use a higher level of PPE. And that involves those special masks that you've heard about in the news, those N95 masks along with the face shields and sometimes different types of isolation gowns depending um, what the procedure is. What happens during the, the, the testing process for COVID-19? So uh, if you need to get tested for COVID-19, it could get done uh, usually three different ways. The most common way is something called a nasal pharyngeal swab. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's probably uh, an uncomfortable procedure, but uh, is uh, very short lived where they take a swab and uh, put it in your nose and, and get it a little bit deeper to get a good sample. Mm -hmm. uh, there is also throat swabs where they do the same thing in the throat. Mm -hmm. And then when patients are really sick and on life support like a ventilator, we're actually able to go down to their lungs and get a sample right from the lower respiratory tract. Oh, well. If someone is positive uh, for COVID-19, what is the next step? So they... it, it really depends on how they're doing. Um, so there's really three uh, avenues that their care could go if they're really well and they could go home and self-isolate and likely the emergency room physician or the assessment clinic would send them home to self-isolate. Mm -hmm. If they require oxygen and they're not doing well and have some complications from the disease, they may be either admitted to our medical wards, which we have COVID units, um, which would they, they would go to. And if they're really sick and they require high intensity care, then they'd come to our critical care unit. How long does it take after um, a symptomatic person's tested positive for symptoms to become um, much more serious? So, um, Usually when uh, you can track the infection, the incubation period is around five to six days. So if you are gonna get symptomatic, you usually get symptomatic around the fifth or sixth day. And then when people uh, get really sick, we're finding it's around that 10 to 11 day mark. So if someone 
um, gets symptomatic, gets tested, uh, then it's usually around five or six days later that they, they may require a hospital admission uh, if they were well prior. Okay, that that, make, that answers the question for me because I was talking to someone who was uh, uh, two days um, after being diagnosed and the person mm -hmm. had minor, minor, minor uh, symptoms. Um, how can you protect yourself um, or pr protect your family from contracting um, COVID-19 if you have it? So um, if you have COVID-19, uh, you're asked to be in self-isolation. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if you, if you live with others, that's a little, a little bit more uh, difficult. Mm -hmm. um, there are a number of recommendations. And if somebody is uh, COVID positive and, and needs these, uh, Public, Health and, uh, Public Health Ontario has some guidelines. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would think the assessment center, whoever diagnosed them, would also give them some guidelines. Yeah. But it, it's the same rules that apply outside, but inside the house, which is a little bit more difficult, right? So isolating yourself from your family, perhaps living in a, a floor, the basement or upstairs, so that way you're not interacting in the same spaces. Um, you can think of the common areas that are often used, like the bathroom and the, mm -hmm. uh, and the bedrooms. Um, if you could... Um, isolate to using just one bathroom, that'd probably be preferable. And, and there are some extremes where if it's, uh, if it's possible, some people actually um, move out to a second home if they have it, or if, if, if it's possible to stay on their own for a few days. Do all your COVID-19 positive patients have symptoms and what kind of symptoms uh, do they have? So uh, I, I work in the critical care, so you have to have pretty extreme symptoms for me to, to see you in the hospital. But uh, in a general uh, perspective, uh, most COVID-19 patients will have mild symptoms. There's actually uh, a set that will be completely asymptomatic through and through. Um, that number keeps rising as we're learning more about the disease. There, there's estimates uh, somewhere between now they're thinking close to 20 to 30% uh, get uh, a asymptomatic disease. Mm -hmm. um, when people do progress to getting symptoms, the classic ones are uh, fever, um, sore throat, fatigue, uh, and dry cough. But mm -hmm. then there's been also a lot of atypical symptoms, particularly in um, some of the elderly population, um, things like headaches, um, aches and pains, uh, mm -hmm. diarrhea has also been uh, a bit more common. So it's a disease that uh, presents like a usual upper respiratory tract infection symptom or a common cold, but can also have a lot of uh, atypical symptoms. So how can human transmission of COVID-19 occur when in uh, close contact with someone who's uh, symptomatic? That's a great question. So when, when you look at the people who uh, are at risk of contacting it for somebody who's positive, there, there is usually an, an, a number of things that occur and, and it's often close contact for a period of time. Mm -hmm. And that period of time that um, the experts who, who do contact tracing is usually around the 15 minute mark. And as you can imagine, if it's a family member, you're often spending a lot more than 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's things that you share, right? So bathrooms, uh, common areas. Um, so it, it's either you're gonna get it from being in close contact with that person if they cough uh, or sneeze and you're in the area or if you're just with them for a long time and you, and you touch something that they touched and then accidentally touched your, your face uh, or your nose. Is it possible to tell if someone has already had COVID-19 and how, how, do you t how can you tell? That's another great question. So there are tests out there, antibody testing, that could tell if you've had the disease at some point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not um, yet available in Canada, apart from experimental um, situations, but uh, I'm, I'm certain it will be available soon. And, and those are good, but they're not perfect. So uh, they'll be able to tell if you had it, but it's not 100% sensitive to know if you've had it or not. So there, there will be some people, even when we have this test, um, mm -hmm. who would test negative and yet still have had it. Uh, but it's it's it will be out soon, uh, I suspect, uh, hopefully within the next few weeks, two months. There's a lot of, well, there's a lot of things that goes on on social media. Some videos that you watch, it's hard to tell what's true from what's not. I saw a recent video they were saying to start um, taking vitamin D. What organs in your body does COVID-19 impact? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, it, it primarily uh, impacts your lungs, and, and that's where it, it, it attacks when it gets serious. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but then you can get obviously complications from the disease itself. And, and there are some uh, instances where it could attack other organs. Some mm -hmm. common organs that get uh, impacted are usually your kidneys. So if you're really sick uh, because of COVID-19, uh, you do have a chance of your kidneys shutting down. Uh, there has also been uh, a lot of um, conversation in the medical literature about how this disease seems to affect your uh, blood coagulation pathway. Uh, there's a lot of these patients with COVID-19 that are presenting uh, with blood clots um, uh, or even strokes. So it seems to have a, a, a greater effect than other infections on your coagulation pathway. And uh, it, it's been really affecting almost every organ. There's even some um, documentation out there of skin rashes, uh, and that's how people present with COVID-19. So it's a disease with many faces, but its primary impact is on your respiratory system. What kind of treatments are you providing to your patients? So um, the mainstay of treatment at the current time is supportive care. So mm -hmm. providing them oxygen if they need it, hydrating them when they need it, um, treating any concomitant complications or infections. There, there are uh, a number of studies looking at uh, drugs that uh, can be directed at COVID-19, either to shorten the uh, period that somebody's sick or, or hopefully at some point, uh, uh, treat it, cure it, or decrease the mortality. Mm -hmm. uh, but none of those have been really proven uh, to be effective uh, that we're using at our hospital or, uh, yeah, at the current time. How young was your um, youngest COVID-19 uh, patient? Because you see all these uh, pictures of the younger generation that are going on beaches and doing all these things. How, mm -hmm. how young is the patient, one of the patients that you've seen so in the critical care unit, we've had a, a, a number of young patients, uh, one in their late 20s and uh, one in their uh, early 30s, and they both uh, became uh, very ill. You're right. It's a disease that primarily affects the um, older population uh, more severely, but given um, how ubiquitous it is out there, and people getting infected, it still does um, get young people very sick, mm -hmm. or at least a subset of them. What's one thing you can tell a young person not to do? <laughs> uh, um, I think, I think when you when you're young, uh, you feel invincible, um, and uh, for the most part, young people who do get this disease will be okay. Mm -hmm. But there are some that won't, and yeah. I, I think we got to think about our uh, loved ones and. Um, uh, our friends, mm -hmm. because if we get it and we um, give it to someone else, they could get really sick. So it's not just about ourselves, it's mm -hmm. about the people around us as well. So see if someone were to go out, um, which you're not supposed to be doing, and come back in the home, should they self-isolate themselves away from the rest of the family just to protect the family? Or by just taking up changing your clothes or taking a bath would that right away when you come in would that actually help to prevent any possible um you know like spread of it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. great question and, and it's a question we 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 have to answer uh, as healthcare workers right because we we go out we work and in fact we work with people who are um COVID positive so um I, I can tell you what we do in, in, as healthcare workers. Um, a, a lot of us uh, change our clothes before we, we go home. Uh, a lot of us will take showers before we go home, and some people even take showers once they get home. Uh, I think uh, the, the usual practice of keeping yourself uh, as safe as possible is going to help your family also stay healthy by social distancing, washing your hands all the time. And uh, when you get home, uh, making sure that you know you, you wash your dirty clothes and, and 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 keep yourself clean, I think that will decrease the risk. There's always the risk if you get sick and um, uh, then passing it on to your family members, not just because the virus is on you. And I think in that case, where uh, what you need to do is what we call self-monitoring. So you, you you watch yourself for symptoms or fever, and at the first sign of, of potentially um, getting symptoms. Uh, you should reach out and um, see a, a physician and potentially get tested. Do you think um, it's um, it's interesting because I think everyone 
panics now as soon as you sneeze. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't sneeze or do anything anymore without people thinking. Like even my son, if I were to sneeze, he goes, "Oh my God, are you okay?" Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's um, it's very um, it's a very hard thing to go to go through. Do you ever see like multiple um, patients in one family? Uh, yeah, that are COVID positive. Uh, the yeah. the answer the answer is yes. Um, the highest risk of transmission is actually within families because mm-hmm. it's the people you spend the most time with, right? And you, and you share a lot of the spaces with. Um, so, the, so the answer to that is is yes. Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, sneezing and coughing has now become something that catches everybody's attention. If you do it, everybody <laughs> looks at you and then walks away ten feet. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I, I think uh, we, we just have to be careful, right? Uh, use our cough and sneeze etiquette uh, to not try and spread the disease. Mm-hmm. And if you feel that you could be at risk or you are at risk, um, um, one of the recommendations, uh, particularly for uh, family members who live with uh, COVID positive uh, patients is uh, to consider wearing a mask when they go out and they go say shopping for food, because even though they may be COVID negative, they're still in the higher risk category. So when we wear a mask, sometimes we actually, it's more protecting people around us versus us. Okay. So do you think, um, cause I was speaking to someone before and the individuals were saying that her dad is positive. She's now positive. Uh, one of her brother is positive, but one of the, the siblings isn't. Is it a good idea to get that person out of the space? Um, or is it too late? Uh, that that is a good question. Uh, it, it, every situation is going to be different, right? And, and and it's part medical and part uh, social, right? I, I, so uh, m- my suggestion is to connect with their, their physician or the assessment center and 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 maybe ask that question directly um, to get help in regards to that. Um, like I said, the incubation period in in patients is anywhere from three to 14 days. And that's why when we quarantine people coming from somewhere else is 14 days. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, in some scenarios, it may be possible that the person already had it and cleared it. Maybe they were the first person. It's possible that uh, they haven't had it and, and they, they got to be extra careful. And it's possible they have it, but just the test hasn't been positive yet. So uh, every scenario is different. And, and I think having a conversation uh, with their physician mm-hmm. uh, would be worthwhile. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Do you have something to share? Let everyone know about your next meeting, your need for volunteers, or your fundraising event on the Rogers TV community billboard. Send us your words and we'll bring them to life on Rogers TV and RogersTV.com. When it's time to spread the word, go to RogersTV.com to add your announcement to the community billboard. Welcome back to Health 180 with Carrie and Fan and Rogers TV Durham. Dr. Solomon from Lake Ridge Health is back with me by video to talk more about treating COVID-19 patients. How often do you get tested? So uh, myself, actually, I haven't been tested uh, yet. Um, I think we have a very low threshold for healthcare practitioners to get tested. So the scenarios we're currently testing is anybody who has any symptoms at all. Mm-hmm. And then anybody who's had exposure to either a patient or another healthcare worker without the appropriate PPE. Are you worried about you and your family contracting it as a result of your occupation? And what are you doing to protect your family? Mm-hmm. That's a great question. So I, I, I think everybody in the hospital uh, has the um, same concern. It's not to bring this home to their loved ones. Mm-hmm. So uh, as stated before, um, the hospital has been able to um, uh, help us in, in our practices where we want to change before we go home and we want to shower by creating more change room for, uh, for people and, and more rooms where people can have showers prior to going home. Mm-hmm. And then uh, in, in certain scenarios, um, 
um, where you have uh, loved ones uh, or acquaintances that are, are in the more vulnerable group, um, like everybody else, we're, we're self-isolating ourselves from them. Is the coronavirus more severe than the flu? So that, that's a great question. Um, uh, the um, severity of the flu um, that we see on a yearly basis uh, is quite high uh, in the vulnerable population. That's why we, we have the vaccine. The coronavirus is new and, and the mortality rate from it, uh, what we understand so far is around uh, two to 3%. And that number may end up be lower, being much lower uh, because there's a lot of patients that we think just haven't been diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Whereas the mortality of influenza is, is around 1%. Uh, from a numbers perspective, if you look worldwide, um, there's around 290,000 deaths approximately from COVID-19 for a tribute to COVID-19. And on a yearly basis around the world, you get somewhere between 290,000 to 650,000 deaths. So uh, I think it's, it's, it's different than the flu. We don't quite understand um, how big of a mortality impact it has in terms of percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, definitely right now, uh, because it's a new virus that a lot of people aren't used to, we just don't have the immunity as some of us do with the influenza virus. Do you think we'll have a second or a third surge? I hope not. <laughs> Yeah, me too. I hope not either. But uh, um, I, I think it's very much possible. Uh, I, I think we, we've done well as a society in, in curbing that first uh, peak. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, uh, we've done a, a really good job in, in, in a lot of provinces. And um, as we ease restrictions, uh, one must expect that there will be a, 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 an increase in, in COVID positive numbers as we move around more in society, which I, I think at some point is uh, definitely necessary. Uh, hopefully though, that uh, that peak or, or that spike won't be uh, terribly high. And then the other concern in the medical community is around the fall. So mm -hmm. as you know, influenza is a seasonal disease that we usually see around the fall. Uh, coronavirus uh, tends to be also a seasonal disease, although the first time a virus comes through uh, it's not absolutely clear uh, how it, how it will um, how will how 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 the summer will impact it. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, there there could be uh, multiple spikes ahead of us, mm -hmm. and the one that we're really concerned about the most is probably in the fall. But hopefully, if we do things right in terms of easing the, uh, the restrictions in the right way, mm -hmm. and preparing ourselves and having um, all the infection control practices that we've been practicing over the past uh, few weeks to months. Um, that those spikes too would be blunted. We hear a lot of the hospitals needed more ventilators. Um, if you're placed on a ventilator, what are the chance of survival and would your quality of life um, be impacted seriously? Mm -hmm. that, that's another great question. So if you require a ventilator, essentially what that means is life support. So your disease process has progressed to a point where you can't breathe on your own. So that, that, that's a very severe disease state. Mm -hmm. So um, your chance of survival, obviously, from a, a, a disease that requires you to go on a ventilator is less than if you didn't get to that severity stage. Mm -hmm. In terms of numbers, I, I think uh, there's a lot that can impact that. The older you are, uh, the um, less chance you have of surviving being on a ventilator, whereas the younger you are, you're more likely to survive uh, from the ventilator. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of different numbers around the world. Um, um, all I could say is um, our numbers in Canada t ha have been, at least the state, uh, a little bit uh, better than we've seen in other countries like Italy and um, China. And, and I think a big part of that is um, we've been able to prepare for it and, and we haven't been overwhelmed with the numbers um, that they have been getting. So um, if you, uh, if you, after recovering from uh, COVID-19, what test is given to clear you from COVID-19? So um, it, it depends um, how you were diagnosed and how severe your illness was. Yeah. It, when you come to hospital for us to clear you, uh, you need two tests that are 24 hours apart that are both negative. Uh, as an outpatient, that may also be the case. But uh, I see um, uh, some of the public health recommendations as well is um, they consider some patients cleared after 14 days from the beginning of symptoms. 
So fortunate. That's a good thing. That's all the time we have for today's episode of Health 180 with Carrie and Fenn and Rogers TV. Thank you to Dr. Solomon from Lake Ridge Health for speaking with me today. And thank you for joining me. And remember, together we're stronger. Starting next week, we're launching a Health 180 shout out. If you're a frontline worker, tell us why you're on the front line. If you're staying at home, recognize a frontline worker by telling us which frontline worker you are staying at home for. If you're a local business, tell us who you are and tell us if you're open. This is how we do it. Hi everyone, my name is Reverend Michelle Malton. I'm the owner here at Granddad's Ice Cream Parlor in Pickering. And because my ice cream shop wasn't able to open for a while, I wanted to help out the community. We started a collective called Grand Act Cares. It's a food drive that supports the community with the help from many other people, care mongers, Ajax Pickering, Carrie on Fan, Jennifer Johnson. There's a lot of people coming together, helping us out. So if you or anybody you know need some help, all the donations that come in are properly sanitized. They're put into bags and we have drivers that can drop them off to the curb to you. I just want to let everybody know to stay safe out there. If you need anything, please reach out. We are all here to help. And stay tuned for some masks coming for everybody in the community. And thank you, everybody, for your help. Thank you for the video. Join us next time for the next video. And check it out to see if your video is coming up on Help 180. the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. I did it. I need it.